three identical squares are put side by side. Draw the three diagonals like this. What is the sum of these three angles? Let's look at nine different approaches to solve it. They include deductive geometry, trigonometry, coordinate geometry, matrix, vectors, and complex numbers. We shall do some preparation before looking at each method one by one. First of all, we label the vertices as A to H. We also name the angles as X, Y, and Z. It is obvious that Z is equal to 45 degrees because it is in a right-angled isosceles triangle. So we only have to figure out the sum of X and Y. Indeed, the sizes of the angles are not affected by the length of the squares. It is because we can scale it up and scale it down freely. So to make it simple, we take the side length of the squares to be 1. Now let's look at the first method. We focus on the red triangle FGD and the green triangle DGE. Because they are overlapping, let's separate them into two figures. Can we say something about these two triangles? Clearly, they are not congruent triangles. It is because the red one can be fit inside the green one. However, we're going to show that they're similar to each other. When it comes to the three reasons to prove similar triangles, we do not use AAA because we are finding the unknown angles X and Y. We have no idea about all the three pairs of angles in the first place. What we know is only one pair. You see, this angle at the point G is a common angle for both triangles. Perhaps we can make use of ratio of two sides included angle. Let's figure out the length of the sides. In the purple triangle DGH, we can make use of Pythagoras theorem to solve for the hypotenuse DG, which is square root 2. So for the ratio of the first pair of sides, FG over DG is equal to 1 over square root 2. What about the second pair? Now, GD over GE is equal to square root 2 over 2, which is equal to 1 over square root 2. This is exactly the same as the first pair. So we have proof that the two triangles are similar. What's so special about this result? Indeed, we can move the angles around. Now, these two angles are both equal to x because of corresponding angles similar triangles. To see why it is the case, we start with this dotted line. It is the angle bisector of the angle at G. Reflect the red triangle about this line, and then translate it downwards so that the common angle and the two sides coincide. Then we enlarge it to obtain the green triangle. Now you can see the two corresponding angles at the same position. At this moment, we are just one step from the ultimate result. Let's focus on the red triangle FGD again. By exterior angle of triangle, we have x plus y is equal to z, which is equal to 45 degrees. In other words, x plus y plus z is equal to 90 degrees. Great! How about other geometric methods? For the next one, we need to add three more squares below and label four extra vertices as I to L. Let's focus on the blue triangle DHF. It is right angled, with two shorter sides being 1 and 2. Actually, there are some other triangles of the same type. We construct the side EK. Then, this purple triangle is also of this type. Put it in a formal way, triangle DHF is congruent to triangle KGE. So, these two angles are both equal to Y because of corresponding angles, congruent triangles. Why do we have to consider this? You see, the two angles X and Y are separated in the original setting. But now, they're put together. The question becomes easier. Indeed, this purple triangle is not the only one we want to talk about. Let's construct a side DK as well. Then, this red triangle and this green triangle are also right angled with sides 1 and 2. That means triangle EIK is congruent to triangle KLD. Therefore, we have a couple of important results from congruent triangles. The two hypotenuses EK and KD are corresponding sides, so they are equal. Also, these two angles are corresponding angles. Let's call them alpha. 
together with the right angle at the point I, we can figure out this blue angle at the point K. Let's call it beta. We look at the red triangle EIK and make use of exterior angle of triangle. Therefore, the sum of interior angles alpha plus 90 degrees is equal to the exterior angle, which is alpha plus beta. Cancel out alpha on both sides, we have beta is equal to 90 degrees. What can we say about x and y? Putting the results together, we have proved that the blue triangle DEK is a right-angled isosceles triangle. Therefore, the remaining two angles are both 45 degrees. That is, x plus y is equal to 45 degrees. We get the same result as in method 1. Can we make use of the same figure but come up with a different proof? Absolutely. Now, we move the angle y downwards to the point j. Construct the two green sides ej and dj as well. Let's look at the green triangle ejd and the red triangle hlj. Guess what? We're going to use the same method, that is proving similar triangles with the same reason in a different setting. Here, we can show that this angle at the point J is a right angle, because it is the sum of two angles, both of them are 45 degrees. This is properties of square. So the sum is 90 degrees. It is also the same as this angle at the point L. Let's figure out the ratio of sides as well. From method 1, we have the hypotenuse DJ being square root 2. Likewise, EJ and GJ are also equal to square root 2. For the ratio of first pair of sides, HL over EJ is equal to 1 over square root 2. When it comes to the second pair, JL over DJ is equal to 2 over 2 times square root 2, which is equal to 1 over square root 2. So we have two pair of sides with equal ratio. In other words, the two triangles are similar because of ratio of two sides included angle. Using this result, we can say that these two angles are both equal to y because of corresponding angles similar triangles. Let's see the animation to understand this. Now, we reflect the red triangle to the right, then translate it to the left and rotate it. Enlarge this triangle, then you can see that the two angles overlap. Moreover, in the blue triangle DEG, we use exterior angle of triangle again. Then, x plus y is equal to z. So, we have proved the result for the third time. Then, what about using a little bit trigonometric ratio? Here comes the fourth method. Note that tangent x is equal to 1 over 3, tangent y is equal to 1 over 2, and tangent z is equal to 1. Our goal is to prove that x plus y is equal to z. In other words, arctangent 1 over 3 plus arctangent 1 over 2 is equal to arctangent 1. Now, we drop a perpendicular line from point G to the side DF. Let this point be P. We are going to figure out the lengths of the sides GP, FP, and DP. For the time being, we focus on the red triangle GPF. GP over FP is equal to tangent Y, which is equal to 1 over 2. So let GP equals to K and FP equals to 2K. With all the three sides, we can use Pythagoras theorem. Therefore, K square plus 2K whole square is equal to 1 square. Solving it, we have K is equal to 1 over square root 5. That is, GP is equal to 1 over square root 5 and FP is equal to 2 over square root 5. What about DP? Let's work out the hypotenuse FD. In the blue triangle, we make use of Pythagoras theorem again. Therefore, FD is equal to square root 5. So, DP is the difference of the lengths, which is equal to 3 over square root 5. What else can we figure out? Now, let's look at this red triangle. Do we know anything about this angle A? Tangent A is equal to 1 over square root 5 divided by 3 over square root 5, which is equal to 1 over 3, and this is equal to tangent X. Because both A and X are acute angles, therefore A is equal to X. By the same token, we have exterior angle of triangle, that is, X plus Y is equal to Z. The proof is completed. 
So far, we have a whole bunch of methods using geometry. What about other branches of mathematics? It's time for trigonometry. In method 5, we extract the two angles x and y like this. Let the length of the common side AD be 1. Using the values of tangent x and tangent y, the green side BD is equal to 1 over 3, and the red side CD is equal to 1 over 2. Now, we can work out these two hypotenuses easily. For the green triangle on the left, we apply Pythagoras' theorem, so AB is equal to square root 10 over 3. Likewise, for the red triangle on the right, by Pythagoras' theorem again, we have AC is equal to square root 5 over 2. How to make use of these lengths? Now, the horizontal side BC is equal to 5 over 6. And here's the thing. If we treat angle X plus Y as a whole, then we can apply cosine formula. The left-hand side is the square of opposite side BC. While on the right-hand side, we have the sum of squares of the other two sides. Together with minus 2 times the two lengths cosine bracket X plus Y. After simplification, we get the value which is equal to 1 over square root 2. So x plus y is equal to 45 degrees or 315 degrees. However, the second value is rejected. It is because it is an angle in the triangle. So it must be smaller than 180 degrees. There is only one possibility for x plus y. We have made use of different kinds of construction. Is there any method that we don't have to construct anything? The sixth method is probably the shortest way to work out, and I call this the brute force method. Now, let's work out tangent bracket x plus y directly. We make use of the compound angle formula, tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus tangent x tangent y. Putting the values inside, we get tangent bracket x plus y is equal to 1. By the same argument as method 5, we can conclude that x plus y is equal to 45 degrees. So there's a shift from somewhat geometry to algebra. Yes, what we're going to look at is quite computational. For method 7, we introduce a rectangular coordinate system such that E is the origin, EH and EA are the positive axes. We also let the coordinates of D be 3, 1. Now, let's rotate the side OD about the origin in anti clockwise direction by an angle theta. Let the image of D be the point Q with coordinates A, B. We call the rotation matrix M, which is equal to cosine theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. Therefore, the coordinates of image Q can be found by multiplying the rotation matrix and the coordinates of D. So what value of theta should we choose? Clearly, if theta is equal to y, then the inclination of the green line OQ is exactly x plus y. Therefore, tangent theta is equal to 1 over 2. By drawing triangle, we have the two values, sine theta is equal to 1 over square root 5, and cosine theta is equal to 2 over square root 5. Now, we can put everything into the equation like this. Here, we take out the common factor 1 over square root 5 for convenience. After performing matrix multiplication, we get the coordinates of Q. That is, AB is equal to square root 5, square root 5. Great! Let's figure out the slope of OQ, which is equal to square root 5 minus 0 over square root 5 minus 0, which is equal to 1. In other words, the inclination of OQ is equal to arctangent 1, which is 45 degrees. Again, we get the desired result, x plus y is equal to 45 degrees. For method 8, here we come the vector. Let vector EF be i and vector EA be j. Now, we're going to express the two green vectors in terms of i and j. They are vector df is equal to negative 2i minus j, and vector dg is equal to negative i minus j. Then we can talk about the angle between them, which is this angle theta. What can we do with these two vectors? Let's take a scalar product. It is also known as the dot product. On the left hand side, we have negative 2 times negative 1 plus negative 1 times negative 1. 
while the right-hand side are the magnitudes of the two vectors and cosine theta. After simplification, we have cosine theta is equal to 3 over square root 10. What's so special about this value? By drawing right-angled triangle again, we have tangent theta is equal to 1 over 3, and this is exactly equal to tangent x. Therefore, theta is equal to x. Now, by exterior angle of triangle, the result follows for the eighth time. We come to the most exciting part. How on earth is this geometry question solved by complex numbers? We define the argon diagram with E as the origin. The real axis is EH, and the imaginary axis is EA. We use the complex numbers Z1, Z2, and Z3 to represent ED, FD, and GD respectively. So, Z1 is equal to 3 plus I, Z2 is equal to 2 plus i, and Z3 is equal to 1 plus i. You see, it is pretty much the same as the vectors, except we ignore the directions of line segments. Now, x plus y plus z is the sum of arguments of three complex numbers. There is an important property which helps a great deal. The sum is equal to the arguments of one complex number z1 times z2 times z3. It can be understood quickly. If we write a complex number in polar form r times e to the power of i theta, this short proof shows the case of two complex numbers. Now we just have to work out the product, which is very straightforward. For z1 times z2, it is equal to 5 plus 5i. Multiply it a second time, then z1 times z2 times z3 is equal to 10i. That means the sum of x y and z is equal to the arguments of 10i. Because this is a purely imaginary number, therefore the argument is equal to pi over 2. Alright, that's it. But what can we obtain from this special result? Indeed, the identity arctangent 1 over 1 equals to arctangent 1 over 2 plus arctangent 1 over 3 is so beautiful that one may be curious to replace the numbers by unknowns a, b, and c which are positive integers. Then we are eager to know if there are solutions other than 1, 2, and 3. And the answer is yes. For instance, we have two more sets of solutions, 3, 5, 8, or 8, 13, 21. If we change the form of the equation, then it is a Dalfanta equation. BC is equal to AB plus CA plus 1. Now, it is about number theory. Our next question would be, is there any general formula for the solutions? If so, how do we interpret that formula by geometry or trigonometry? Take the case of a, b, c equals to 3, 5, 8 as an example. How do we know that arctangent 1 over 3 is equal to arctangent 1 over 5 plus arctangent 1 over 8 by looking at this figure? See how different branches of mathematics are interconnected. We may also generalize the result into some more identities involving arctangent. They are shown on the screen right now. The three identities on the left are sum of two terms, while the other three on the right are sum of infinite number of terms. Perhaps the most interesting one is this one at the bottom. How is Fibonacci sequence related to trigonometry? You will find more fun in working out these identities. By the way, do you have other intelligent ways to solve the three squares problem? or to prove the results right here? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm so curious to know what you think. Check out the next video for this amazing identity of tangent. I will see you there.